Hello and welcome to Textbook Engineering Problem. Today we're working out of Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes, 3rd edition. We are doing problem number 3.1. I'll read the problem statement. Perform the following estimations without using a calculator. A. Estimate the mass of water in kilograms in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Okay. Um, sounds like we need to kind of look things up online to find out like the volume per se of a uh, general Olympic size swimming pool and then we'll just do like a order of magnitude um, estimation. Okay, so let's do 3.1 part A. Um, the volume of an Olympic swimming pool is about 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 5 gallons. Okay and mass equals density times uh, volume, okay? So let's say 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 5 gallons. That's roughly, let's change this to 3.785 liters per gallon and the density of water is one gram per milliliter, and there's 1,000 milliliters per liter, and kilograms, one kilogram, a thousand grams. Okay. So now let's do our order of magnitude adjustment here. Um, this first number is about 7, um, the next number is about 4, 1, um, then we've got 1, but it's times 10 to the 3, uh, but both of those cancel out. Okay, so then we've got um, times 10 to the 5 here from our first number. And so the number of kilograms is about 28 times 10 to the 5 kilograms. Okay, that's our first estimation for the mass of water in an Olympic sized swimming pool. B. A drinking glass is being filled from a pitcher. Estimate the mass flow rate of the water, grams per second. Okay, um, this one I'm just kind of making stuff up. So uh, it takes about three seconds to fill my glass. Um, and I'll say the glass is about a volume of two cups. Okay, so that means that the um, volumetric flow rate is uh, two cups per three seconds. Okay, so now we need to estimate what the mass flow rate is, grams per second. So the mass flow rate equals, um, so we got two cups per three seconds. Oh, because, because uh, the mass flow rate equals the density times the volumetric flow rate. Okay, um, so just, um, I need to make sure that I write some of these things down because um, they just make sense to me. So if I'm going too fast, uh, um, leave a comment and then I'll try and explain. Sometimes I know I, I, I've used some of these things so much that I forget to write them down or explain them. But the mass flow rate equals the density times the volumetric flow rate. So there you go. Um, okay, so there are about 230 milliliters per cup and one gram per milliliter water density and that equals let's do an order of magnitude adjustment here so we got two and three and we can say instead of 230 we can say it's about 240 okay because you can divide that pretty easily. 
And so 3 goes into 24 8 times. So 8 times 2 is 16, so grams per second. There you go. All right, part C. Part C. 12 heavyweight boxers coincidentally get on the same elevator in Great Britain. Posted on the elevator wall is a sign that gives the maximum safe combined weight of the passengers. The maximum weight is W max in stones. And one stone equals 14 pounds mass, which is about six kilograms. Okay. If you were one of the boxers, estimate the lowest value of weight max for which you would feel comfortable remaining on the elevator. Okay, that's a little involved, a little weirdly specific. Okay. So the minimum weight I looked up online, the minimum weight for a heavyweight boxer is about 180 pounds mass. Um, but the average weight is about 230. So we'll go with the average weight, 230. Okay. Um, so the average weight of a heavyweight boxer is about 230 pounds of mass. Okay. Okay, so it says that 12 heavyweight boxers are getting on, so I'll do 12 times um, the average weight, 230 pounds mass, and there are 14 pounds in a stone, and so that equals about 220 stones. Okay, but we're going to increase this by um, a safety factor because we don't want to be like right at the elevator's limit. So let's in give it a safety factor of like 50%. So we'll increase this by 50, uh, W max by 50%. So W max should be about um, times 1.5 to increase this by 50%. And that is 30. about 330 stones. OK, so. Okay, so I would feel safe getting on an elevator if I had a safety factor of about 50% because, of course, we're at the average weight. Maybe my team of heavyweight boxers is a little bit uh, heavier than average, and so, yeah, there you go, um, increasing that safety factor a little bit. Um, or I'd just wait for the second elevator. <laughs> okay. Um, D, an oil pipeline across Alaska is 4.5 feet in diameter and 800 miles long. How many barrels of oil are required to fill the pipeline? Okay, so the volume of the pipe is equal to the cross-sectional area of the pipe times the length of the pipe. And the cross-sectional area of the pipe, uh, assume it's a circle, so pi r squared times l. Okay. So let's start estimating what that is. The volume of the pipe is equal to um, 4.5 divided by 2 squared, because that's the diameter. And then that is in feet squared. Um, and we have 800 miles. OK, and then there are 500 and or 5,280 feet in a mile. And 
um, one barrel of oil is equal to 42 gallons. And there are 7.48 gallons per feet cubed. So now we need to estimate about what all this is. Hey, just caught a mistake here. I forgot to add pi to my multiplication. So I have the radius squared, I have the length, and I have the unit conversions, but I did not multiply pi. So it should be about a, a factor of three larger than what I state at the end here without using a calculator. So let's write our estimation down. We've got first one we'll estimate as five times five because we're squaring it. We're dividing by two times two. Then we'll say this is about eight and uh, 10 squared. And then we'll say the next one's about five as well times 10 to the three. And um, about seven. Okay, and then on the bottom, we've got uh, 42. Okay, so we'll start canceling some of these out. So seven divided by uh, 42, so that goes to um, six. And then these twos cancel with this guy to be um, two. And then that six turns into a three. And then we've got five times five times five. That's um, 125 divided by three. So 42. And times 10 to the 5. So 4 times 10 to the 5, or time 10, times 10 to the 6. And that's barrels of oil. Okay. Barrels of oil. Okay, so part E. Uh, estimate the volume of your body in two different ways. Show your work. Okay, I'd say my mass is, oh, here's my first. So my mass is about 170 pounds. So let's calculate the volume. The mass equals the density times the volume. So the volume equals mass divided by density. Okay, so I'd say 170 pounds mass divided by one kilogram is about 2.2 .2 pounds mass and meters. There is about 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And this about equals 90 times 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed, uh, or my body volume in meters cubed. So let's do it a different way. Um, I can just say, okay, I'm about 6 feet. I'll just pretend my body is like a box, and I'm about 6 feet um by six inches or sorry six uh yeah six inches 0 0.5 feet by um 1.5 feet okay so then i'll say my volume is about 4.5 feet cubed. Okay, let's put that into meters cubed. So that is about 
0 0.13 meters cubed. Let's see, let's compare these. Uh, method one, I got about 0 0.9 times 10 to the minus one meters three. And then method two, I got 1.3 times 10 to the minus one meters cubed. Okay, yeah, so that is pretty close. That is pretty close to what I had before. So that's two different ways you can estimate your body weight or body volume. Okay, let's do F. A solid block is dropped into water and very slowly sinks to the bottom. Estimate its specific gravity. Okay, if it's very slowly dropping in the water, um, then it needs to have about the same density as the water. Um, so it's only just barely slightly higher than one. Um, okay, so specific gravity. Let's define what specific gravity is. Specific gravity is, specific gravity is the ratio of the density of the substance to the density of a reference substance at a specific condition. So the density of the reference in specific gravity is usually water at four degrees Celsius, which is basically one gram per centimeter cubed. Okay, so if we're just slightly higher than water, then, then it's going to be um, maybe like, it's, it's very close to one specific gravity um, compared to the water. So it's only gonna be slightly higher, slightly higher. So instead of being about one, we need to make sure that it's like um, slightly larger than one. But very slightly. I don't know. I don't know a, uh, a symbol for saying slightly larger, but I kind of made one up there. So there you go. Um, all right. I think that's it for problem 3.1. Thanks for joining me. Um, again, if you saw any errors or had any questions about how I did the math, um, just leave a comment below and I will respond to that comment or I'll make a video or something along those lines that will help clear things up for you. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.